In this video, I would like to tell you how to derive the equation for the shape of the water that you see flowing from the faucet. So I was trying to find a picture with this type of flow that you see, but it was not so easy to find such a picture, at least the one for free. So that's a faucet from my own apartment. And so you see the water here kind of uh, slope a little bit, and it's not supposed to be sloped. It's falling straight forward under the influence of the gravitational field over the Earth, of course but it's the slope of the camera. So I took this picture, but anyway, so it's just so that you know. And so in this video, we'd like to drive, you see the envelope of, of the form of the shape, something that this shape we see very often. And then one day I wondered, hey, yeah, that's interesting. It's narrowing down and uh, it's interesting to derive the equation. I was a freshman at the time and I was able to drive it and I was pretty uh, pleased with myself, I was happy then. Uh, just like in the case with the coffee cup caustics, I also made a video about that, so uh, feel free to check it. And so I was pretty happy that I uh, derived the shape. And then, uh, okay, so uh, of course nothing really special uh, here about this. Anyone who took a course in fluid dynamics could do it easily. And uh, here, even under some uh, assumptions that I will elaborate on, even you know the first course in classical mechanics would would suffice. Even. I would argue even maybe high school level, uh, like the end of, end of high school. Uh, so anyways, let's, uh, let's get started. So what we see here is that the profile of water here is narrowing down, right? And so if we draw it here, suppose that this is the section and this is like the place where it leaves the faucet and suppose that it has initial radius, let's call it R0, and then the water is narrowing down, as we see, it it happens pretty slowly and if this is the height let's call this uh, uh, H here right uh, and what we would like to drive basically is the dependence of this radius of the function of H where H equals 0 here we'll set uh, the origin so where H equals equals to 0 we get our 0 and then we'd like to to find this R as a function of H and now I need to uh, to say what are the assumptions here, and it's actually related to to story. Actually, that day when I derived this equation, I was invited to to a wedding, but uh, you know of some guy that I barely knew, and so I was seated, you know, with random people that I don't know at all. I don't know any of them because I barely knew the one who was, you know, uh, the groom. And so anyway, there was this girl at the table, and we started talking. You know, she was seated next to me. Uh, I wasn't single, but I still wanted, you know, to impress her. And that, well, she, she wasn't. She told me she was an engineering student, and I said that I study mathematics. And then I said, "Oh, you know, I derived the shape of the water. You know, this shape that you see uh, every day. I found an equation for this." And then there was another guy who overheard our conversation. He was also seated with us. Uh, nobody uh, of us knew him, of course. And then he just, you know, bought it into the conversation, and he just. Uh, said, oh, well, uh, what is the dependence on the viscosity of uh, the, the, in, in this formula that you derived? And uh, I said, I didn't use viscosity. And then he said that, well, then you got it all wrong. And I was, you know, at that moment, I was really furious. Like, nobody is literally talking to you. Who asked you to intervene in our conversation? But the worst part, of course, is that I didn't have uh, a right away reply to him. And as I started thinking about what he said, uh, it occurred to me he's actually right because if you think of a very viscous fluid that is flowing like for example honey then you know it can even stop in mid-air and it will not flow like water and so it has to be dependent on viscosity of course and then I didn't have a good reply to him why because I knew that the formula I derived is supposed to work at least you know it made sense uh, uh, so and then uh, after a few minutes uh, like Maybe it took me a while to understand it. Uh, I came up, I think, with a decent answer, which will be among the assumptions that I will explain now. Uh, I wanted, you know, to, to tell him, but then I discovered that he left, and uh, up until this day, <laughs> I uh, never managed, you know, to tell him. I don't, I don't know his name. I don't know how he looks like, but still, you know, it's just among those things that makes you angry. So anyway, let's let's get going with the problem. So what is the assumption here about the viscosity? So uh, we have particles of water here, of course, and the reason that it narrows down is because the water, uh, in a sense, flows together here. So, and and the reason is that there are uh, forces between uh, molecules of water that 
and make them sti stick together, of course. And so it reflected in, in the viscosity. So in, in a case of water, or in the case of, case of this problem that I'm trying to solve, we can assume, or at least I will assume, that the viscosity is high enough to assume that the, all the molecules here move together right, as one piece, uh, as one continuous piece. And on the other hand, uh, I would say that viscosity is uh, small enough to neglect its effect on, on gravity because you know the viscous force between this layer and this layer is supposed to kind of slow down the falling as it happens in honey. If you start pouring honey, then it will be uh, you know pouring slowly not like water and this is because of the viscosity so anyway now that we got this cleared away let's derive the equation so uh for for uh, this uh, particle of water and for the flow here we see that it's held together so it flows uh, as in uh, in one piece and therefore the water narrows down here uh, right so let us then uh, now try to try to drive it. So first of all, we will assume right that in the slice, right, suppose that we take this very small interval delta t here, right? This is very small. And suppose that from here the initial velocity is v0, and so the width of this is going to be uh, v0 delta t, right? This is the uh, width of this. And the area, the, the volume, sorry, the volume of this chunk of water is going to be, this is right, radius r0, so it's going to be pi uh, r0 squared, and then v0 delta t. This is the volume we can assume uh, that when delta t is very slow, is small, this is like a cylinder here, so this is the volume of the cylinder. And since water is incompressible fluid, that all the water that was in this layer, you can think of it as just this one strip, uh, very thin turns out to be in here and since the volume is preserved then uh, you know at later time or at all times if we look in here for example where we have here the ra radius r of h then for r of h is supposed to be the same by the conservation of uh, of you know the volume because at each instance this you know this thin chunk is going to be in the next uh, level so we have this conservation that it has to be equal to pi r of uh, h squared times v of h and the reason is that v of h is growing it's accelerating of course the, the the fluid is accelerate is being accelerated v of h delta t so basically we can now reduce delta t from the equation and we get the following uh so r zero uh squared v zero equals to r of h squared v of h this is our uh, environment so at all times, we'll assume that the velocity that the water leaves the faucet here is V0, which is positive, so V0 is positive, and then we have this, this conservation. And now uh, we're assuming that uh, there is energy conservation. It's just a fancier way to uh, derive the uh, relation between the velocity in, in a free fall, so in a faster way, instead of deri deriving the formula. So for example, if we take this point, over here, then uh, and set here uh, the, this as the reference for the potential energy. Then the total energy will be here at this point will be half m v zero squared plus m g h. You know this is for one particle of water. I'm treating it individually, but they kind of flow together. Uh, equals to half m. We can say v of h squared here right and then uh this is gives us exactly the formula for the velocity in you know in a constant acceleration currently the acceleration is just g so it's twice g h uh this is equals and if we take the root the root okay we'll take the root later v h squared or if we want then we have v of h equals to uh, v0 squared plus twice g h to the power of one half. Uh, yeah, seems to be just right. And then when we plug it into this equation, we can have actually, to f we can find r of h, which is our goal. So if, so r of h is going to be, uh, it's going to be r of h squared 
this is going to be r0 squared uh, v0 of course r0 and v0 are uh, positive uh, and here we're going to have v0 squared plus twice g h right so and this is to the power of half so now if we take the root so we have the equation for r of h which is r0 uh, the square root of v0 which is supposed to be positive uh, at least v0 in order for this to be defined and then we have here v0 plus two twice g h to the power of one fourth and then if we're talking about parametric equation right for the surface so suppose that this axis goes up this is x y n and z then we know how r is dependent upon h so for each h here we could have this r of h and basically we need to go around the circle so the parameterization would be so if we introduce an angle theta here so uh, one way to write the equation is going to be r0 the square root of v0 and here uh, v0 squared plus twice g h to the power of one quarter this is cosine theta and this would be r0 the square root of v0 and here we'll have v0 squared plus twice g h to the power of one quarter and this is sine of theta and here this is going to be h and basically as theta is the in the interval 0 to 2 pi uh, let's take this open and this closed and h theoretically is in 0 infinity now of course this equation is supposed uh, to break down and it's supposed to break down eventually because as it narrows down we will see that you know the we, we know from observation that it's begins to, to pinch on the, at the end here, you know, because it's getting torn apart, it's being separated, but also it is supposed to, to break down, at least that when when it's smaller, when R of H is smaller than the uh, radius or the diameter of water molecule, of course. So, you know, uh, we need some assumptions here, but uh, like in this picture here, this remains valid for this picture. And another way, if you want to write this in Cartesian coordinates, uh, you know, you want to write this, for example, if you have here this is x this is y and this is z and basically you know you want to suppose that this is r0 here right this is our r0 and we want to uh, define find the equation in terms of x y it can be translated from what we did above but i'll take another approach so suppose that we have here a point x of y x y right and then we want to find z of x y here Okay, so uh, here we have a point x, y. Basically, z is dependent only upon r here. So this is x squared plus y squared, the square root of that. And basically, we want to find this. This is our h. So actually, what we want to find, we want to find h as a function of r. And it's not, not so hard as well, because if we go here, then this is r of h. But uh, then we want to solve the equation. So what we'll have is the following. So we're going to have, if we divide it, so we're going to have R0 over R, this is R of H of course, and the square root of V0 is supposed to be equal to V0 squared plus twice GH. This is to the power of quarter. And of course, now we take the fourth power here. So it's V0 squared plus twice GH equals V0 squared and here we're having r0 over r to the power of 4 and if we want to find h as a function of r then we you know move it aside so we are going to have v0 squared divided by 2g and here we're going to have r0 over r this is to the power of 4 and minus 1 right and this this makes sense because when r equals r0 uh, then h is 0 so and we also see that roughly this behaves asymptotically as r is close to zero this behaves uh, as uh, one over r to the power of four near zero right some coefficient here but and this means that it rises really rapidly and it is consistent with the observation that 
we really need to go long way along the stream for uh, to observe narrowing down of, of the water as is in the picture. If we look here uh, at, the, at the top picture here, we see that it's narrowing down, but quite slowly. Uh, yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, we need to define quite slowly, but uh, it seems to make sense to what we have derived here. And so indeed, if we uh, now plug in and we want to write this equation of hxy and maybe th this is our z if you want to write it as z as a function of x and y then you know r uh, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared of course and then we plug it in here so we get the equation v0 squared divided by 2g and here it is all times uh, here r0 divided by x squared plus y squared this is of course r squared and we need r to the fourth power so it is squared minus one and this is our equation that you saw in the thumbnail so in my videos what you see is what you get so i really hope that you enjoyed it uh click the bell button not to miss future uploads and please consider subscribing to the channel thank you and hope to see you in the next video